Okay guys, just want to pass on a quick tip here. We got this uh, 2007 Dodge Caravan. Uh, engine's a little tired, uh, a little worn, right? Uh, came in for a no start because it was flooded. Uh, all the plugs were fouled, had to replace them. It's running, but you know what? The intake's full of junk, all that sort of business. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run some sea foam through the intake. Now, I just wanna show you what I do for running this through. It's really easy to do, nice quick way and the way you can actually get the most out of this. Of course, you wanna get it up to at least mostly operating temperature. Full operating temperature is the best, but you definitely don't wanna do it cold. So uh, let me just warm this up a little bit more. I'll get under the hood, I'll get it set up, and I'll show you what I do on uh, using this stuff to get the most out of it without really any fancy equipment or tools. Okay, so we're under the hood. Um, we got our bottle open. We got our hose set up, so you find a nice place to insert your chemical, cleaning chemical, whichever product you're using. Uh, some of them come with little spray nozzles with uh, long hoses that you can kind of, or long straws that you can stick underneath the, um, the boot and into the throttle. You know what, I don't like using those. What I like doing is going off of a vacuum line, particularly this one right here, that is the brake booster vacuum line of course you want to make sure you're in park uh, parking brake set all that sort of stuff it's best if you can have an extra person inside the vehicle uh, safety folks it's really important don't run yourself over anyways that obviously is going to let in way too much way too quickly so how do we meter it well first we'll pull this off hook up our hose now, it would have been better if I had a much longer hose, but uh, I didn't really feel like cutting up a brand new line, so this is what I got. Then, ta-da! Our uh, brake line hose pincher, or any kind of small uh, pincher off tool. Particularly, you'd want something like this that has a wing nut, not, not the uh, plier style, because you want to be able to adjust this. So, what we do, crank this all the way down, so we plug this off. Come on. Hmm. I am by myself right now, so it would have been better if I had a long hose than I could have rigged it up. I could have set my metering and I could have gone inside and raised the RPMs a little bit, but I can do it right here because it is cable operated. So uh, let me fire it up and we'll start administering. Okay, so we are running. So if you're not cable operated, it's best to have another person inside to raise it, you know, 1,000, 1,200 RPMs rather than just idle, allowing some more airflow to go across to bring more of that cleaner through and do a better job. Now, I am kind of, yeah, it's not really the best spot. It would have been kind of better to be closer over here. Um, but I'll start off with this just kind of cleaning some of this front part and then maybe I can move to another section but this is just to kind of show you what you can do it will still kind of pull some of that to some of these other cylinders just won't get as much but I've cleaned the throttle body so there's a lot of cleaner that's gone through that part so this should be okay better than nothing for this tired old girl oh yeah how's that look so what we're gonna do we're gonna start opening this clamp allow some of that in you'll start hearing the engine change as that's running through there like there, raise the RPMs a little bit. And just do that to run it through. Of course, it's got oil leaks and it's burning off on the exhaust. Then it's not a bad idea. What I like to do after I've administered a bit, I'll close this off. We still got more in the can. Allow some of it to kind of burn out of the intake just on its own. Allow a little more in. Yeah, we're 
we're starting to get all kinds of good stuff out of the exhaust right now. Close that some more. I like to kind of rev it up and down a bit to allow uh, pulses to kind of distribute it a little bit better rather than just a, a steady RPM. Close that. that was a little bit much. Whoa, that's way too much. And we'll just kind of burn off the last of this. Pinch off the line, we'll give it a check to see if there's anything still in there. Yeah, oh yeah, there's still some stuff in there. Well, that's gonna be a bit much. Pretty well empty now. Oh yeah, that's just a massive vacuum leak at this point. Close off the vacuum leak. That out of there oh yeah she is empty I could show it to you but you won't be able to see that anyways so we'll kind of rev it some more okay then of course when you're done all that uh, you want to let it idle for a little bit to kind of settle down kind of get used to uh, readjusting its trims and all that then we'll shut it off we'll put our vacuum booster line back on make sure you hook this up properly right you don't want to drive without vacuum brakes that's uh, unnerving to say the least wait so let me shut it off I'll switch this over and then we'll go for a drive but first the good stuff oh yeah look at that that of course is going to take a while to clear that out we will need to go for a good drive a good burn to get rid of all that we don't want to give it back to the customer like that and uh, of course this isn't going to restore the vehicle back to brand new but it's kind of the best we can do for the kind of vehicle it is and the sort of budget the person wants to put in this um, they just kind of want to squeeze it out a little bit longer as a daily driver in town so uh, let me swap that hose over we'll uh, get ready to go for a burn and see what happens okay so we're about ready to go for a drive um, we are still puking out back there I don't know if, how well you'll be able to see that yeah, it's already coming in the cab even. Um, it is quite common to set a check engine light when you're doing these sorts of things. So if you're doing this for a customer or your own vehicle, don't forget to uh, clear that light before you give it back. So I'm uh, just gonna go for a drive around the block, try to give it a chance to open up that throttle blade, get a lot of airflow to come in there to clear out any remaining cleaner that is in um, kind of the bottom of the intake. Uh, particularly if you have a intake runner flap that needs to kind of actuate a few times to clean all that junk out too. Um, definitely want to give it a good burn. Okay, so we're back after a good burn. Um, you know, I put it in a third gear. It'd be nice if we, nicer if we had a second gear to kind of hold it at a higher uh, 
higher load but uh, that's all we got um, this vehicle is an oil burner um, as you can see it's how much of that's gonna really clear out more than that I don't know uh, this engine is old and tired and not really that many kilometers on it per se what do we got 199,000 kilometers not miles um, but you know it's just one of those things you get a, a vehicle that's not really maintained that well it's just kind of never really goes on any kind of drive ran cold all the time yeah it happens um, so there's best possible chance of kind of freshening things up how much it's gonna freshen up I don't know but I wanted to show you kind of how I administer um, intake cleaners and it seems to work pretty well of course you know when you got something that's burning oil there's only so much you can do right but we cleaned out the intake uh, I just want to pass that on so uh, as always just want to say thanks for watching we'll I'll catch you on the next one and bye for now oh yeah don't forget to clear that check engine light for whatever good that does <laughs> yeah we'll catch you on the next one